Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nelly. Today we'll be talking about a theory that helps us explain the different types of laws that we observe in the, with gases, all the empirical laws. It also helps us um, understand a little bit more from a molecular perspective what is going on with the gases uh, and gas particles. The theory itself is called the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Usually I'll just shorten it as KMT just to be, uh, you know, instead of a mouthful of having to say all of those um, words. The first thing to talk about is just why we actually need a theory for gases. Now, this is a very general question, and you can answer it generally in the following sense. Uh, all the laws that we talked about, Boyle's law, uh, Charles's law, and everything else, all those empirical laws are observations, right? So we know they're true. We know we can use them to predict properties. If we increase uh, pressure, volume will decrease. However, the problem with laws is, as the problem with all kinds of laws is, they don't provide a reason why the observations exist. Okay. So for example, we know in Charles' law that when we heat a gas, the volume will also go up proportionally. But why? Why does that happen? Why should heating a gas cause it to expand? We don't know. So we need a theory to help explain why that is. And so what the KMT does is it provides this explanation. It provides a molecular framework or picture of what is going on with the gases in terms of the atomic theory uh, of matter. And what it also allows us to do is, of course, predict other properties of gases, uh, properties that we can test experimentally. And that's generally the, the importance of a theory is allows you to predict what you already observe and also allows you to make future, you know, prediction of future experiments. Now, I want, before I actually go into the kinetic molecular theory, I want to uh, mention this very important caveat or, or uh, reminder that you have to keep in mind about the following discussion, okay? And this is going to be true for a couple of the chapters couple of the chapters that we'll talk about in this class uh, that are, are coming. The first one is this idea that the KMT is um, by its nature, it's by its nature it's actually a very mathematical type of concept and it was developed uh, over a period of about a hundred years by various uh, physicists, very well known if you take physics you'll you'll learn these names pretty soon. And because our class is not a physics class, it's not a mathematics class, we don't uh, require the students to have uh, a very advanced um, background in mathematics, there is no way we can actually discuss the full mathematical detail of the KMT in this class, okay? And it's not the appropriate use of time. What we want to be able to get out of this discussion is just uh, some understanding of what the molecular picture that um, underlies gases and particularly we want to be able to use or apply the ideas proposed in the KMT, in the kinetic molecular theory, to explain things that we have already observed like the empirical gas laws, uh, and we'll talk about some other properties like diffusion and how we can use the kinetic molecular theory to explain those properties. Okay, with that, uh, keeping that in mind, we want to go in and talk about the KMT now. The first thing to talk about is just how, um, you know, how much work had gone into developing the kinetic molecular theory, and this came from work by uh, a lot more scientists than the ones shown here. However, these three made, you know, major contributions to the development of the theory. So they're the ones that are usually credited for uh, putting in uh, the, 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 you know, the major kind of framework into this theory. And these people are uh, Boltzmann, uh, Clausius, and Maxwell. Now, if again, like I said, this, these, these. Uh, Three scientists were all physicists, and if you were to, again, take a physics class, you'll encounter them again and again uh, in discussion of various types of, of physics phenomenon. And again, we're going to mention, you know, 
some of them their names with relation to the development of the kinetic molecular theory but again we're not going to go into the mathematical detail of the concepts that they proposed so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the history of the kinetic molecular theory as I mentioned in the videos on the empirical gas laws the empirical gas laws were discovered you know we, people observed them in the various experiments basically about a period of 150 years or so between 1660 when Boyle um, first observed the relationship between pressure and volume to about 1805 when Dalton um, <clears throat> were able to uh, was able to observe this relationship about partial pressure and total pressure where the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressure now after these empirical laws between around 1800 to 1860 there were various theories that came around not necessarily about gases but these was uh, all these theories uh, came around to try to explain what is the nature of energy and particularly what uh, was of interest at the time was heat um, so the, the idea of what exactly is heat and um, how is heat being transferred from one system to another that's something that uh, it was very important to the people at the time it's very important now as well uh, but people wanted to know that because that was the time uh, of the Industrial Revolution so people were kind of interested in trying to use heat to try to move uh, mechanical objects like trains uh, automobiles and, and so on okay um, so the theories then were developed around that time and one of the things you need to know at this point is just some definitions energy uh, is basically defined as the capacity uh, of a system to do work work in this case has a very special meaning it's a it's a it's a meaning that's defined in physics uh, and work here is defined as the force that you apply to an object to uh, cause it to be displaced okay so if you think about this picture in your head for a moment if you uh, have a chair in front of you or you have a table in front of you or a book and you push that object that book that chair or that table a certain distance that means you're doing work on that object okay so you're applying force and you're making that object move a particular distance away from what it, it orig its original position is okay now I will mention that we'll talk uh, quite a bit more about energy heat and work in the next chapter after the gases chapter but right now that's about all you need uh, to know uh, just so that you can follow the discussion a little bit and what the uh, conclusion after the end of all of these different theories is people realize that heat is really not a substance so people used to think that heat is like uh, you know like like a gas or something or like like water you know it's some type of a substance it's matter basically it has particles that make up heat and uh, that was basically proven not to be the correct way of of understanding heat so that was taken out and instead people understood that now heat is really just a form of energy and heat is a special form of energy because it's the form of energy that results from the motion of particles in, in other words when particles move around they create energy and this energy is what we observe uh, macroscopically as heat so when uh, for example you're in a hot room you know in a room that's hotter warmer uh, there's a lot of motions of particles in that room and that's uh, what generates that heat now uh, that when when we're talking about motion of particles okay this type of energy is what we call kinetic energy so the word kinetic um, means the motion of particles okay so we're going to continue this a little bit the brief history of the KMT uh, around the 1860s or so uh, Clausius then uh, you know that's one of the guys that we talked about earlier in the earlier picture he was this guy right here he came up with this idea that to explain the property of gases and he basically utilized this concept of the kinetic energy which is the energy of motion of particles so what he said was that um, the energy of a gas particle so if you have a sample of gas let's say you have oxygen for example in a container or you have air around you the energy of these uh, 
air particles, gas particles, come from their motion. Okay, in other words, the gas particles are moving around, and as a result of the that motion, it generates energy, and so the energy that we have from a gas collection of gas particles is kinetic energy. Okay, now because it's a kinetic energy, the theory that Clausius proposed is also called the kinetic theory of gases. Okay, so you can see how that that word kinetic molecular theory comes about because of the res the, the proposal is that these gases have energy that results from their motion and as a result it's called kinetic uh, theory. Uh, this is a really important part of this kinetic theory which is that he um, basically said that the temperature of a gas is proportional to the kinetic energy of the gas particle. So in other words if a gas is hot that means that the gas particles have higher kinetic energy and if the gas is colder, then the gas particles have lower kinetic energy. Okay, and we'll talk about an expression for kinetic energy and actual equation later on. But right now, that's all you need to kind of understand first is that when a gas is hot, the kinetic energy is higher. Now, kinetic energy is uh, corresponds to the motion of the particle. So if you have higher energy, that means the particles are moving faster. Okay, so that's something to think about. The speed of the particles are higher at higher temperature, and the speed of the particles are lower at lower temperature. Okay, now the kinetic energy in this case being uh, the result of different types of motion. You can think about translational motion, uh, things moving from one location to another, rotational, if it just rotates around, or vibrational, which is just vibration of atoms, for example, around bonds, okay, around chemical bonds. Okay, so that's a really kind of first step in understanding gases. Uh, and then the next uh, major contribution, uh, two major contributions were by Maxwell, which around the 1860s, 70s or so proposed that instead of thinking of the speed of the gas particles as one speed, there's actually, it's more correct to think about it as a distribution of speed. In other words, the gases don't all move at the same speed, the gas particles, but they move at, some of them move slower, some of them move faster, okay? Uh, and I put this analogy right here. You can think about this like uh, cars moving uh, in a freeway, okay? Uh, at, at a given time of the day, uh, if you look at a freeway, you'll see that some cars are moving really fast and some cars are moving quite more slowly, okay? So that's kind of the idea is that however if we, you know, there, there's some cars that are moving faster, some cars are moving slow, you can take an average speed of the freeway at the time, let's say it might be going at 50 miles per hour, but of course some cars are going at 65 miles per hour, some cars are going at maybe 45 miles per hour, okay? Um, the kind of last major contribution to this theory is uh, by Boltzmann which came up with something called a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution which is basically an equation that explain how this speed uh, of particles is distributed so that allows us then to predict if we have a collection of gas how is how are the gases going to move and that has an importance in predicting uh, the speed of chemical reactions as I'll, I'll discuss when we get to that point okay so in the next video I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the actual uh, details of the kinetic molecular theory and then we'll spend a little bit of time working on a simulation that will help us explain how apply basically the kinetic molecular theory to explain the empirical gas laws